Hey everybody, welcome back to the Audio Cycling YouTube channel where today we're going to be taking a look at the Velo Game 2024, how I did, how riders and other teams did. Heads up, it didn't go too well for me. I got quite a few DNFs, but you know, the whole point of this is that I'm just honest with you guys, see where it went right and see where it went wrong. Obviously you can see we finished 16,000, so pretty awfully. We dropped down the stage race championship, so hopes of winning that are are next to nil but taking a look at my riders obviously we had some very good performers Pagatra being the main one 3,841 points I was actually wondering if that was more points than he got in in the Giro it was actually just a little bit more uh, about 100 points more so Pagatra was obviously the correct pick to be going with even at 28 credits uh, and obviously the correct thing to do is go with a really high scoring all-rounder in your second slot. Unfortunately, I went for Bill Bow, tried to save a bit of budget here. And that ended up coming back to haunt me because he, of course, DNF'd. Obviously, you can't predict those sorts of things. But at the end of the day, maybe it would have been better to try and just stack up with another big podium contender and maybe drop Yates or something. But saying that, Yates did do okay. He was just shy of the 100 points per credit kind of benchmark that I set. So overall that's pretty good, but certainly there were better options to be going with. Vlasov, of course he DNF'd as well. I do stick by this as a pick, because I do think that after Roglic DNF the race, if Vlasov was still in, Vlasov could certainly have done something in this race. He could have gotten some breakaways, he could have finished inside the top 10 in my opinion. Definitely, I think he would have done better than Boitrago. So I think that, that one was just again quite unlucky. Pedersen was also quite unlucky. I, again, stick by this. I think he was the correct pick to be going with. It's just that, obviously, he DNF stage five. And the fact that he got this many points in the space of five stages, he made it over stage one, that really tricky stage. And he was looking really fast in a lot of the sprints. I do think that Pedersen would have been contending for the green jersey, but obviously he was putting, he was in a barrier. And uh, obviously that's... Uh, I was really not conducive to getting lots of points. So sadly, we, we didn't get a lot of points from Pedersen. Not a lot of people picked Binny, actually. When you look at the uh, when, when you look at the rider standings and stuff like that, uh, when you look at the sprinters and the amount of points they got, Binny was only selected by like 2% of people. So it was obviously a bit of a weird one in terms of the sprinters. You definitely wanted Binny. Uh, Philipson was, was decent, but not, not brilliant. Uh, and Wout Van Aert was pretty consistent as well. So, obviously they were the best ones, but they were, you know, not a lot of people wanted to, were thinking of picking Binny. Uh, Stephen Williams wasn't that great at all. I don't know really what happened there. I really thought he'd be much better in the opening couple of stages. I think, I thought there'd be some more breakaway stages that he'd be involved in. Uh, but obviously, Grand Tour debut, so maybe that's a bit of a lesson for the future that maybe debutants aren't the best ones to be going with. So, yeah, Williams certainly wasn't the best one. And when you look at the other unclassified riders, which we'll do in a minute, uh, you'll see that actually for six credit riders weren't that brilliant this this time round. Somebody who was really good was Derek G, 949 points, eight credits. So obviously he was really good, finished inside the top 10 uh, and got quite a few top 10s along the way as well. So I was really good. G was the best unclassified rider to be going with, so I was happy to have him. He was one of the uh, better better choices in this team. We had Van Hills, who again, DNF a race. I thought very similar to Williams. I thought he'd be a bit more involved in some breakaways. But it was pretty evident from like stage 9, that gravel stage to Trois, that he just, he was dropped from that breakaway. and it, it just wasn't, it didn't look like he was going to be, you know, doing the best performance ever. But again, the lesson of he's a Grand Tour debutant, so maybe it wasn't the best idea to be going him with him, especially at eight credits. And then lastly, Chicone, who went for GC rather than stages. I was kind of hoping he might be allowed into a breakaway or two along the way, a bit like Carapaz, uh, and try to do kind of what Carapaz did. But, you know, he was very much on 100 points per credit, so I can't be too upset with that. Chicone, I did stick by. So overall, we got just shy of 8,000 points. Not that great, but... You know, when you take a look at the rider standings, obviously Pogacar, the, the biggest one you want to be going with. Uh, Vingegaard and Avenapool were very close in points, but obviously Avenapool being, I think he was like six credits cheaper. Avenapool was the better one to be going with. Uh, Almeida at 12 credits. I saw a lot of people picking him. I was a little bit sceptical. Obviously, I was wrong. 
because uh, Almeida got quite a lot of points per credit here, like uh, at least kind of he he's nearing 150 there. Germay, outstanding. Philipson, I guess he was good, but you probably wanted to save those points and try and get one of these two big riders in there instead of him. That would have been a little bit better. Uh, Yates was was fine. Jorgensen again was fine, almost on 100 points per credit. Lander was fantastic. Carapaz was fantastic. I remember hyping him up a lot in the preview, talking about how a rider of his kind of caliber, of his of his stature in in terms of results. And uh, how he was eight credits, but obviously I didn't listen to my own words there. Hopefully you guys did. Uh, Rodriguez, I guess he was the better of the fourteen credit riders between him and Adam Yates. So uh, at least that was a a fifty fifty decision that I got correct this time round. Ackerman was a really good good value rider at six credits, one hundred fifty points per credit from him. Uh, Chicone and Boitrago, you, you could barely separate them. I did say Turgis was the best four credit rider. Um, so at least that was one thing which I got right and then yeah you got the unclassified riders which we'll go take a look at now because when you look at them the and the points which they got and say look at eight credit riders you know G was head and shoulders above everybody else pretty easily uh, six credit riders though you get Abrahamson obviously because he was killing it in week one Campanas who got a stage win you got Vokalan who got a stage win here as well and yeah, then De Plus, who nice and consistent, who I was thinking of going with, but didn't. Went with a little bit, somebody a little bit braver. But yeah, then you look down, like we're already very quickly into the two hundred points. So six credit riders weren't that great, and obviously Turgis was categorically the best, and Gibbons was also pretty good too. So that's about it for my summary of this Vela game twenty twenty four. Let me know how you did in the comments section down below. Uh, I am sorry I didn't get back to like anybody in the comments. I was just so busy with, with traveling. But I'm back now from the tour. I'm looking forward to the next part of the season. We're only a few eight weeks away from the Vuelta a España, the Olympic road race and stuff like that. So be sure to subscribe and stick around because videos will be coming out for those. And all that is left to say is to stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video. Salut!